back at it again today. I'm going to be doing something uh, pretty cool. I'm going to be doing the radiator hoses, all the hoses all the time. Um, so I'm going to be doing the stock to aftermarket silicone hoses ones, or silicose, silicone hoses. Um, so the reason why is because, well, they're ancient and some of them don't even look like they were meant to be radiator hoses. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today. I'll show you what I got. So I got all white, which is going to go with my theme. Um, got this one for the top, this one for the bottom, uh, and then those ones are the miscellaneous ones that go throughout the car, like this one, this one, this one, etc. One, check up your car. Make sure you have a jack stand just in case. Also, if I didn't mention it already, make sure you have coolant. That guy. You always want to try and do the instructions if you ever get a like, concentrate like I did. As you can see, it says concentrate. Uh, so in some situations, it's going to be like 50-50. Some situations, it's going to be 70-30. So on and so forth. But first step, check up your car so you can get to that bleeder valve. Hey, I have jack stand right there. My jack is used as a backup support. Make sure you use both things that you trust. You do not want to do this with any crap quality, low-end junk. Use good stuff. Gator cap. Um, always want to make sure you do this when it's cooler than after running. You want to make sure it sits for a while because you don't want that crap to boil. You don't want that to burn you. So make sure that, you know, it's cooled down significantly before doing this. So I've run into a little bit of a problem. Uh, I got a Mishimoto aftermarket radiator. It doesn't have a standard drain plug, valve, whatever. Uh, so it's got a bolt, which... Is fine but let me show you so as you can see that bolt right there that guy uh, that's the problem child now I can reach down and grab it that's not a problem um, the problem is look how closed off is it, it is in there there's like it's gonna make a mess to clean this out um, so that sucks that really really sucks but what I do have are two drain pans specifically set up for hopefully not overkill spillage. Uh, I'm not looking forward to this. Ooh, antifreeze everywhere! Wonderful! Yeah, love it. It's great. This is great. They want to know how to get antifreeze out of cement, like off the ground. Because, uh,. I'm sure I'll figure it out, but pretty sure that's not good stuff. So, I mean, you don't want to touch it, so yeah. Maybe water will dilute the hell out of it. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Spray it with the hose or something. Anyway, got a stack like that because the little one on the bottom wasn't doing very much anyway. Got antifreeze everywhere. Wonderful. Um, all I had to do was loosen this by hand. It wasn't even on there very tight. And I'm pretty sure that this piece is not supposed to remove like that. <laughs> Pretty sure. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna flush the system. I just got it on like a you know little flow. It's called full, that's what I'm using. It doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just filling it up inside the radiator and I don't know if you can see that, but it's cleaning it out of all the excess stuff because I don't want it to be like, you know, mixed in with bad uh, water or coolant. I want it to be nice and fresh. Yes, forgive me. I soaked the hell out of myself because it is 87 degrees. That's way too damn hot. Um, but anyway, so I just put the drain plug back in. Um, so, well, the bolt, whatever, the magnetic plug, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, so I put that back in. Um, now I'm going to actually start working on replacing the hoses, swapping them all out and everything. Uh, this is probably going to be the hardest part just because they're time consuming. Um, but I also managed to, you know, rinse all the antifreeze on the ground. So that way, that way it doesn't, you know, get all gross and stuff. But yeah. Depending on what kind of clamps you have may determine on what size you got. But this guy is a 10. So I'm going to start with the top and go down. Uh, just because it'll be easier for me. So let's go ahead and get started on that. I actually chose to move my air, um, my cold air intake out of the way. Because this is right where I need to be for this guy. So... I just undid this. There's one. So, this guy. Let's see. 
Yep, should be a good spot. So upon inspection, this one is definitely longer than this one. So I'm hoping that's not going to cause too much of an issue, but I'll see what happens. Definitely going to have to cut it a little bit. Um, it's just a little too long. So maybe I'll, uh, I'll I'm going to mark it up next to the other one and uh, you know, kind of just go from there, kind of give it some markings, um, double check that everything is the right length, and then cut it and then hope for the best. There's one. It's kind of tight right there. It was a little long, so I had to cut it a little bit extra. This is not all I cut off. There was more to it than that, but... You know, I made sure that it was nice and snug on there, nice and covering in there, so now on to the next hoses. I'm supposed to put on new clamps and everything, so I'm just having it sit right here making sure before I clamp everything down that it all sits properly. Um, per what I've come to understand is that you have to remove these two 12 millimeter bolts to remove the reservoir up here. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens from there. So there's actually a third bolt too, right there, that this kind of sits in. Kind of just sits in place. Well, I can't really do it with one hand right now. But anyway, it's that guy right there. And then once you do, you get this little guy right here. And it goes on like this. And I'm going to swap it out with that one. It's going to look so much better. But, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So make sure you line it up properly. It's a little bit more angled than the stock, but that's okay. You know right now, if you plan on doing this, this one sucks. So bad. Because it's super, like, it barely fits over this can this... I guess tube or I don't know what to call it anyway it just sucks because it's like this is smaller in the interior diameter than this so it has to stretch I'm basically just using a little smidgen of gear oil just around the rim not like a lot because I don't want that to get in my coolant but just a smidgen just to get it over there and the bottom side was even worse so yeah if you get into this just be warned it sucks and make sure that you put your clamps on before you do the final one, because then it's going to be a pain, you're going to have to do it all over again. Got most of it put back together. This one, this one, this one, this one. This guy is a pain in the ass, and unfortunately it's split, so I'm just going to have to suck it up for now, because one of those guys, I presume it's this one, because it's the only one that's wide enough to go around the channel right there. Like, you can't even, there's no angle, because it's supposed to go down here to this, Hold on. Right there. But it doesn't want to... It doesn't want to contour properly with the car. So... That's lovely. But I still got to put on the bottom guy. And then the rest of those ones. I also found a potential leak. Which might explain part of my problem with my car. These guys have like this plastic tube piece in them. Oh wait, there we go. These guys have this plastic tube-like piece in them, like they were connected at one point, like so, but they're split, and it connects from there, which goes to the turbo, uh, which goes to all the way right here, following it back, follow it back some more, I think it's this one. Yeah, this one right here, get out of the way, this one right here, which connects to this guy, which connects up to this guy. So, that could be a potential reason as to why I'm having codes. Misfire because turbo leak, boost leak. So, that's a problem. Um, hmm, I don't know how to deal with it yet. I gotta continue finishing out all this stuff. This is taking way longer than I was expecting it to. An hour and a half, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Yeah, bullshit. I've been out here for like five hours now. Sonar said I had a Perrin turbo outlet. I'm pretty sure that's not Perrin. It's plastic. I'm pretty sure that Perrin uses like silicone or something. This is fucking plastic. What a lying scumbag. It's like rubber right there, but for the most part, it's plastic. Wow. Stick <sighs> off your intercooler. It's been kind of a pain, but... <sighs> I noticed that the bolts for the blow-off valve were not stock. I was like, oh god, what is, what's wrong? Sure enough, it's because the internal threads are stripped. All the way down to m almost the bottom. That's why they had a walk, walk washer on there. Wonderful. 
So I'm going to get a, either this new tap or a new tapped or new newly tapped or get a new intercooler. But I mean, I can see cool stuff down here now. So I can actually see everything. It's pretty cool. There's my transmission dipstick. Oh, transmission fluid. Um Yeah. Kinda gnarly looking in here. Kinda gnarly looking. There's my little baby turbo. Baby turbo. It's pretty big. Um yeah. Let's see. 10204H. That looks like a clamp or something. I don't know. I'm gonna try and figure out what kind of turbo this is, because he said it was a VF39, but I highly doubt that with how tiny this damn thing is. This little doohickey is, and I didn't realize it until I started doing this. <sighs> it's the fucking boost controller. It's the wiring that connects inside the cabin into the boost gauge. I didn't think about it until just now, but it all makes sense now. That's, you know, the boost line that goes to the blow-off valve, which, you know, comes from the turbo. So I snipped that and had to, you know, clamp it down, otherwise it's just gonna slip off, so hopefully it stays. I pray that it stays, cause that sucks. I was like, oh crap, after I cut it, cause it wasn't quite cutting how I wanted it to. But we'll see how it goes. All said and done, it should look something like this. But not fizzing, I need a new tab, so that's ASAP. So one thing you want to make sure when you're doing this mod, or swap, or whatever, replacement, whatever you want to call it. Sorry for the tilted video, I don't have a good stand. But uh, one thing you want to make sure, absolutely certain that you do, is that you bleed the radiator. Do not half-ass it. Seriously bleed it, bleed it. Because if you don't, you're going to overheat, and it's going to cause problems, and then you're just going to be screwed. So make sure you bleed your radiator. Um, you know, so basically what you got to do is you're just going to fill it when it's cold, you always want to do it when it's cold, after everything is hooked up and everything, I know I missed some stuff, but, you know, it, it was supposed to be only an hour and a half long job, it ended up being until, working from like, 2 o'clock until almost midnight, so, <coughs> just because it was so, it was just like, there were parts that, you know, were problematic, um, there were even some parts that I didn't end up using, because, they weren't even the right parts. Um, so I got two extra hoses, one of them, and it, I mean, they're not even the right like angles or anything. So that's kind of my problem. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna fix that. Um, I wanna do every single hose before I butchered it, but, you know, butchered that one to make it work. Uh, but anyway, as I was, I was trying to say was uh, make sure you bleed it and everything, make sure everything's working, your fans, all that. Because um, you don't want it to, you know, blow up your motor. Um, you don't want to have leaking and all that stuff, obviously. So make sure everything's tightened down nice and tight. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. So thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and go check out my website uh, at Bish kingdom.bigcartel.com. Other than that, I gotta get to work, so I'll see you guys next time.